Hey, this is Justin with GoVacuum.com and today I'm here doing a tutorial and I'm going to show you on this machine here, a Kirby Upright Vacuum Cleaner, how to replace the transmission. Now this happens to be a Generation Series 6 model, however this tutorial will be valid for the Generation 3, Generation 4, Generation 5, Generation 6, Ultimate G, G2000, and the Kirby Centria. So, what happens is the transmission goes bad. Now this is a transmission, also known as power drive assembly, power unit, uh, drive unit, something like that. What it does is when you go and you push your foot on it, it throws in a neutral allowing you to push freely when you move the vacuum. Push your foot down into drive that engages the transmission and then the wheels will have resistance. Now as you go ahead and you move your handle forward, it will then engage the wheels to propel the vacuum forward and you move it backwards, it then propels the wheel backwards. So that is your transmission assembly. Now, when this is, goes bad, how you can tell is the vacuum doesn't move very easily. You'll also, before the transmission completely goes bad, you might hear a clicking noise. That clicking noise is either your belt that's starting to go bad, the gear has worn out, or the actual internals of the transmission are gone bad. It's not uncommon for that to happen in a Kirby. They're not uh, built like they used to be. As you can see, there's, it's metal, but there's a lot of plastics within the machine and the gears uh, now. Um, but nonetheless, this is going to be a video and show you how to change it, so let's get started here. Take our lens uh, hood cover, lift up on it, and then we're going to get into it and just like we're changing a belt, we pop out our arm if it's on our model and then we twist up on it, taking the belt into the off position. Then we're going to take our latch here to remove the nozzle and there we go. Now, I'm going to spin this around here, I'm going to take off the outer bag and to do that I push away from the vacuum cleaner like that, that releases it from the base. Then I take here and I hit this clip and that releases that. Now I'm going to get into here and on most models you have a screw here and a screw right here. Um, I'm going to use my Torx. Now the tools required for this job are as follows. A Torx 15, I believe this is a Torx 20, it might be a Torx 25, and as well as uh, pointy tools. Um, and I'll show you why you use these later. But the first one that we're going to use is the smaller Torx uh, 15. And this is the only one in here that really uses the Torx 15 is the uh, cord uh, holder screw. That'll pop off there. And then there's usually one on the back here, but since it's not there, we're not going to worry about it. Now, I take my button here and I push on the handle bail assembly, and that releases the handle, so now the handle pops completely off. I then can lift up on this and pop that off. Now, while you're pulling this off, please be careful. You don't want to bend these tabs and break them um, as you go to reapply that. Now, if it didn't just pop off easily, still locked in like that, take your torque screwdriver here give it a little push underneath the plastic and then that will bring that up. Once it's at this point here, you want to kind of push, pull back on it and that way you don't bend those tabs and break them. Okay, so I'm going to set everything real neatly right there so I don't lose it. Now, uh, next thing I want to do is remove the cord completely. So down here, I have a uh, Torx 15 again and I take this one off here. As I said, only for the cord do you use the Torx 15 and then I need to remove this cover. Now some of the newer models don't have this cover, but to remove this cover you go ahead and you push it right here on the plastic cover itself. That kind of frees it up and then you can just push down on it to remove it. Then we have the cord itself. We just pull the cord straight out and now our handle is free from our vacuum cleaner. We can go ahead and set that down. Okay, now we have the guts of the vacuum cleaner. So the first thing we want to do is grab the larger Torx and we want to start on the two screws right beside the switch. So let's go ahead and remove those. Now since you're not a professional and haven't done a thousand of these like I have throughout the 15 years, uh, what you want to do is keep your screws separated so you kind of know where they belong. Okay, so those two in the back are off. Now we have the two up front here. And these are the two at the top we want to remove only. Now, depending upon the age of your Kirby and the condition that it's in, these screws might be rusted. They might be, uh, if you had it in a basement that it was a lot of moisture, you might have to go ahead and um, spray some WD-40 or some Rust Buster on the screws themselves and let that sit in for a few hours in order to uh, make, allow them to be removed very easily. Last thing you want to do is go ahead and just crank on them as they're rusted in there. If you ever worked on a car, you know that it, they just kind of form with it and you'll break them off then you're replacing the housing or having to use a tap and die set. It's not fun. So 
lift this off here straight up once you put the lens cover down you lift straight up on this and that releases your cover so then you're good to go now in the back here we have this now here's the transmission itself okay now we all we already removed the two screws from the front but that's just for the cover there's still two more screws right here and here now we want to remove these And do the same on the other side. And this is all that we're removing in the front because we're not replacing the Kirby fan. Although, if you do this, it's not a bad idea to order the transmission with the fan. And we have a video already to show you how to change that fan. Then we're going to have two screws down here. And we go and uh, remove these now. Some of the older Kirby Generation 3s and 4s never did use Torx. They used Phillips heads. So if you're seeing Phillips heads, don't be worried. It's, they're all in the same place. They weren't black back then. They used stainless, uh, but apparently that cost too much to the Kirby Corporation. So now they just use screws that uh, tend to rust. Okay, so now the top can be removed. Now we don't want to remove that top just yet. What we want to do is take this entire vacuum and flip it over very gently like this. And it's going to expose this here. Now we have three screws we're removing here. One here. and then the two along each side. Just want to make a quick mention here. If you ever have a question about your Kirby vacuum cleaner you need to ask, feel free to always give us a call at 866-GO-VACUUM, 866-GO-VACUUM. Email us info at or you can chat live with us at GoVacuum.com, and that's all seven days of the week. Okay, now we have those three screws gone. Don't remove that screw. And what we're going to do is flip it back over. We're going to hold our hand underneath the top as we flip it, and we set it back like this. Okay, now what we want to do is take this plastic foot cover off. And we want to do that very easily because we don't want to break it. It just snaps off like that. Then there's an axle bar running along here, right there. We want to remove it from that, it just slides right out, and that's it. Now what we can do is get in here uh, to access this area here. We have this, and what we want to do is kind of twist this in and around. Now if you saw that, I'm not disconnecting any wires or anything, but I'm being very careful with this because I don't want to have to go back in and reconnect those. You could theoretically disconnect the top cover, and replace the wires, but it's kind of a pain to do. Okay, so what we want to do is just drop the transmission a little bit just to the point where we can do this and remove the belt. Once that belt is removed from the motor shaft, we then move the transmission back up. We then remove it from the entire vacuum cleaner. The transmission drops straight down and out like so. And that is our old transmission. Now, when we look at the new transmission, Depending upon which model we have, this is one of the newer ones that has the same gears in it. With our transmission, we get these gears here. Now, as it says, when you're doing the, uh, the uh, motor sprocket here, and this is for, let's see here. Okay, so what we're doing is we have three pieces in this bag. Our motor shaft there, or a gear there, our set screw there, and our little uh, pin here. Now, what I'll do to install these is I'll remove the old one. Now, this is actually the same one that I have here, so I'm not going to be removing it, but if I had an old generation 3 or something, I would go ahead and remove this, and I would do that by using my two little hook pieces that we needed. And you can probably get away with just one and a flathead screwdriver right here. Some people will just use a flathead screwdriver. What you want to do is kind of push it down versus pulling it out. Now, as you see that, I lost the clip. That's very common with this. So what you want to do is push down on it, and the clip will be somewhere on this wood colored table or not. Okay, so now, once I have lost that clip, I'm not worried about it because I have a new one there, but I'm going to lift this out here 
and we remove that gear just by applying a little bit of pressure. It would help if I had a flathead screwdriver, which I forgot to grab. But you would work that flathead screwdriver back here behind the motor and then kind of just gently twist it while pushing out and the, the, the gear would pop right off. You would then take your new gear, push it on this way, set it on, and that's it and you'd be good to go back in. And you can take your clip like this and put your new clip back onto here. Just like that. And this is where these little pins do come in handy. These little hooks here. What I usually like to do is to take one side, as you can see here real quick, grab it just like that, push back with my finger. What that does is it gets one side set on. See that side is set on. Now I can take this one here and there you go. There you have it. That's all you have to do. But as I said, that's with the older series, uh, like a generation three. So we would then take our new transmission and pop it onto the uh, machine and that's pretty much it. However, since we're not replacing the transmission here on this machine, as I said, it is good. I'm going to take the old one and put it back on. But it's the same exact process for the same exact transmission. So here's what we do. We grab this transmission and we slide it straight up into the uh, Kirby. Should push in there very easy and hold this piece up. By holding this bracket up while doing that, it makes your life a lot easier. So what we're going to do is take this belt, pop it over that gear. There we go. And we're going to pop it over the other gear. Now, what we can do is take this and really work that in now the whole way. By pushing up on the transmission, we're locking it in place. The belt is on, the gear, everything should be set properly. You should be able to turn that motor shaft while the transmission is in neutral. And it should spin freely just like that without making any noises really, except for the motor, the noise coming off the commentator and the motor. So what we're gonna do is uh, tighten the transmission. But before I do that, I wanna turn this back in here. So what I'm gonna do is take it on the outside here and kind of work it in like that. It was very important that you did it that way. Now, it's just like a reverse of what we did. We can connect the screws here and everything, but we don't want to do that just yet, and I'll show you why. Well, just to flip it back over, I'm going to pop in my three screws here that I had, and these are, of course, our Torx. I'm going to tighten these down here. As I said, we also have a website besides our phone number, and that's at askgovacuum.com. Askgovacuum.com is a form where you can go in. If you have any question about your vacuum cleaner, how to fix something, and it's a part that we offer online on our website where we sell parts at govacuum.com, we're able to go in and we'll give you a written explanation how to do your repair, as well as we'll film a video for you if you request it just like this and then you will know how to fix your vacuum cleaner yourself and you don't have to pay the expensive Kirby or repair fees for any brand. Okay, so that transmission is now fully back on, engaged, and what we need to do is put our cover back on. Now one thing we have to do is connect the handle bale. Now if we look here on the transmission, we see this little arm that rocks up and forth. Rocks up, or that goes up and uh, goes up. What it does is it rocks back and forth after it's connected to the handle. That's what engages forward and engages backwards. So what we're doing is we're connecting the handle bale right there, like that. Now this is the newer style handle bale. If you have a Kirby Generation 3, it used to be a pin that would sit inside of here. So that sits in there like that. Okay, so we're ready to connect everything. Uh, everything's good through there. And as I said, this little pin, this little bar goes right here. Before I connect this, what I like to do is to connect this bar, always. So what I'm going to do is take my plastic cover here, and I'm going to slide this in just like that, pop it straight down, and then right here on this, I just pop this straight down, just like that, and that's all you have to do. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reconnect my bale. I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect my uh, top cover, and these are the uh, screws here. Let's turn it around here, and we're going to do the same thing for the one in the front here. Now, the one in the front are the larger screws, as we remember. And 
Now I always recommend, since this is a metal one, as you go to reconnect these things, what you can do is to actually take a little bit of a WD and soak the screws in WD while they're sitting, or just spray it down a little bit. And what that will do is that helps to prevent it from rusting in the future. Okay, now that we have that on, we're ready to connect our cover back. Set our lens hood down. This slides right on, just like so. And then we can put our two screws in the back here. These are the other two black ones over there. I'm then going to connect my two ones in the front. And those two in the front are the only ones that are pointed, so they're kind of... Uh, easy to remember and distinctive and as I said if you sat them all in the right place or if you organize them when you sat them down you won't get them confused Okay, now what I want to do is I want to connect my uh, plastic cover, but before I do that I need to connect my handle there. So I'm going to take the handle, I'm going to snap it straight in, just like that. I'm going to take my cord, I'm going to plug it in, just like so. Now these cords, it's a wise choice to, while you're doing this, I always recommend change the fan, change the cord, change the transmission. You're going to be set and good to go for many years if you do that, and without a problem on your Kirby. Okay, you have this little clip here. Put that on first at the bottom. And then you kind of just work your way up. And make sure that this grommet slides into the plastic there, just like that. And then you kind of pull it towards the front of the vacuum. And that allows that plastic tab to slide under there. Pop it down. And then set your set screw there. And as we said, I'm going to pop, oh, take the handle back off, I apologize, I gave you the wrong thing there, pop this on. So when we put this on, we pop this on first like this, and then that just sits over it. Now, the trick is, this little cover goes underneath the plastic cover. So the newer Kirby, some of them are on top, you can go under, it's not a huge deal, but the thing to do is to set this on, so what you need to do is line up that screw with that hole, with that hole. So what you do is you kind of line this up first with the cord. Show you here. Line this up here with the cord like that first. Then take your cover, slide it on, and lock that in place. And then that's pretty much good to go. Take our final screw here on this machine. Goes right there. Now, as I said, there might have been and should have been a screw in the back here, but this uh, customer didn't have one on there, so we're not going to worry about it. And then we lock our handle on the handle bale. Another good thing to do, just because you're doing it all, change the belt, change a roller brush. Uh, you get a good new roller brush, it's going to really allow you to clean better. Now, the big benefit, this just uh, sits on here, goes on the front pin like that, and we just push it straight back like that, lock our uh, lock there, put our belt back on, and we are good to go back in once we replace our outer bag. It just kind of twist on the little three buttons here, connect it there, and we twist it on like so. Now you see a common thing people do is they crimp the cord here. Don't do that. Kind of push down on the cord a little while twisting it back and then that ensures that the cord doesn't get crimped and won't burn out. And that goes like that. Now that is all we have to do. We are ready and good to go back. Now any questions about this, as I said, you can always give us a shout at 866-GO-VACUM, 866-GO-VACUM, info go vacuum.com or you can chat live with us at GoVacuum.com. We only have vacuum experts working here. We don't have anybody who doesn't know their way around a vacuum cleaner. And we're here seven days of the week for you, Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm Justin with GoVacuum.com, and this is how to replace a Kirby transmission. And I do recommend the kit that we have on our website, which comes with the transmission, comes with the cord, comes with the new roller, the new belt, and the new fan. I do recommend you replace that all at once, but any questions, you can always contact us. Thank you.